one of the important lessons from an Indian point of view is a significant increase in uh, healthcare spend is something we need into the future. And the second big challenge India has faced is uh, challenges between how different states have acted versus uh, uh, how the center has responded. And a greater coordination between the center and states would certainly improve the situation in terms of effective delivery. Okay. Now, my own firm has been a reasonably large investor in India in the private equity space. Um, if I uh, ask you now, as I'm about to, what are some good areas foreign investors might invest in in India? What would you say are the attractive areas right now? My first uh, uh, recommendation to you is, David, follow the Indian entrepreneurs, what they are doing. Uh, and when you're making investments in India and you know very well, you need to ensure that you're investing in companies where you trust managements, where, uh, of course, they are in the right sectors. And that is obvious in the post-pandemic world. What are the sectors which will make sense, which is digital, uh, the entire uh, uh, e-commerce segment, the technology segment, the pharmaceuticals, consumers, but even some of the segments which may be out of fashion today will see some winners in the days to come. And I have always believed when you invest in India, uh, when things look more challenging, that's the best time to put your money to work. Uh, China and India have been competitors for, I would say, several thousand years, I suspect. But in more recent times, they've been competitors in becoming major global uh, economies. Uh, do you think that China has done things that has enabled it to become the leading manufacturer in the world? And are there things that India could do to also become a leading manufacturer? Or do you think India is best suited to do other kinds of uh, things like information services or technology things and not compete as a manufacturing center with China? I think, first of all, on China, uh, uh, my, my view is that uh, China today, from an economic size point of view, is significantly ahead of India. India has a lot of catching up to do. Having said that, I'm really not sure about what kind of uh, pricing practices China may have had, which have made, the, made it so competitive. India, too, has a significant uh, trade deficit with China. I think the world is changing. We have, the, the world is moving away from high concentration uh, and dependence on one country for its uh, manufacturing to uh, a more uh, uh, spread out opportunity on manufacturing as well as greater resilience. And it is here I see a very significant opportunity for India with a fair pricing and a competitive business model to take share in manufacturing. At the same time, I do believe the COVID world is giving us two opportunities from an Indian point of view. Number one, making us a potential competitor to being the factory of the world, probably after China because of the lead China has. But the other place where India has a huge opportunity is to become the of the world. If there is one change which has happened in the post-COVID era is as far as business economic services are concerned, geography is history. And this big change has a profound impact and an opportunity from an Indian point of view in two ways. I could be sitting in anywhere in India to be serving a customer in any other part of the world from a technology or services point of view. Second, within India, from urban to rural India, I can be operating in a small village and as long as I've got connectivity and connectivity has become much better in India to be able to connect anywhere else in the world via the digital and technology platforms available. Therefore, India has an opportunity not only competing in the space of the factory of the world, but a very big opportunity to compete in being the office of the world.